Next from Springfield, we talk with Don Schaefer, the Executive Vice President of Midwest Truckers Association, about a recent trip he made to Cuba, about talks to open up business with the country. Mr. Schaefer remarks on the country's failing infrastructure and whether Cuba is quite yet ready to accept businesses from states like Illinois. This runs about 25 minutes. Don Schaefer, thanks for joining us again on the Illinois Channel. One of the things that I think a lot of people have heard about recently, and are, uh, I've talked to people and there's a lot of curiosity, is what's going on in Cuba now that Americans can go and visit. And uh, you just came back from uh, a visit there, and we thought we'd want to hear what your impressions are and what kind of struck you. So how long were you there? And, and let's just get started. What were the impressions that you would share with people? It was a nine-day trip. I mean, for what we did more than anything else was look at it from an infrastructure uh, transportation um, uh, viewpoint. So in other words, you know, what, you know, what kind of an infrastructure do they have if they're going to be opening the country up to, quote-unquote, capitalism uh, and, cap and, and major development? Uh, are they ready for it? And I think the, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that we went over there was to be very open about it in terms of, you know, how does it compare to the United States? Uh, what are they going to have to do to be able to uh, uh, to handle, number one, the capital development, number two, the onslaught of visitors, and number three, to, to be able to, uh, to grow in a new economy. And uh, that basically is you know, what the, the whole intent was of the trip. And when, uh, how many people you, uh, went along on your trip, and I presume they were all trucking executives? It was about 25 people, and most of them are uh, uh, trucking, transportation-related uh, individuals, all involved in terms of uh, uh, knowing very well uh, you know, how uh, trucking and logistics work here in the United States, and to take a look and to see how trucking logistics works in Cuba. Uh, the bottom line is, is that they've got a long way to go. I mean, if, if you really want to, uh, uh, to condense it, uh, um, Cuba is a place where someone locked the door about 1958, 59, and walked away from it. And now people are coming back and unlocking the door and going, whoa, we've got a lot to do. Yeah, one of the most visible things, I think, that we all have that iconic image of the old cars because you, you see that on the street. These cars from the uh, 1950s certainly stand out. Um, tell us a little about, about that, but what else is, is so dated there that we are not as familiar with? Well, sure, the cars are everywhere. Tens of thousands of old 1950s and older American cars uh, are, you know, that's, that's the main means of transportation uh, for people. I mean, there's a few uh, in the last year or so, you know, you've seen some Fiats and some Peugeots and still some old junky Russian Lottas running around. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, the whole market, of course, is the old cars. But more than anything else, it's not just the cars that are dated, but really the entire infrastructure. Um, you know, the roads haven't been touched. Uh, you know, the sewer systems, the power grid, uh, just go on and on. The basic life support system uh, for the entire island uh, needs to be updated. Uh, and that is what is happening right now, is that not just the United States, but while we were there, we saw China come in, we saw Japan come in uh, and sign these trade agreements uh, with Cuba to say, hey, we're going to help you upgrade your power plants, uh, we're going to rebuild refineries, we're going to come up with new ways to develop energy sources so that uh, Cuba can grow uh, and at least move ahead from where they are right now. So there's a lot going on. I was going to say uh, a lot of people were critical uh, of the president, President Obama, when he reopened the embassy there and, and more or less uh, formalized relations, at least from kind of a practical standpoint. Uh, I don't know, do you have thoughts on that? Was that a good thing, bad thing? Well, I think one of the things that we saw, we share, we stayed at the Hotel Nacional, which is a national hotel in Havana. And we stayed there for a couple of days. And while we were there, you know, the premier of China, Premier Li, and his delegation, we were sharing the hotel with him. So it was, it was uh, you know, quite the sight. But while we were there, we, you know, and, and the media was very much, the world media was very highly publicizing 
uh, around the rest of the world, but not in the United States. The fact that China went in there with the intent of saying, hey, we're going we're gonna to do all of this because we don't want the Americans coming in and strong arming Cuba. So in other words, you know, they don't want America coming in there and calling the shots now that the, uh, the relations have eased between Cuba and the United States. Um, so, uh, you know, China came in, you know, pretty, pretty strong what they were going to do. Uh, Japan did the same thing. Um, and, and other countries are also, you know, they're all lining up to, to get a piece of the action. Uh, I think everyone feels that uh, Cuba now is fair game, that the United States has eased its relationship and is, is looking to establish more formal relations uh, in the future. Um, it, you know, it's kind of funny because all this is going on at the Hotel Nacional, which is less than two blocks from the U.S. Embassy. And so, uh, you know, it, it's kind of fun, really, to watch the give and play. But even more so is to see, you know, who's going to do what because there's so much to do. I mean, you know, this is a country literally that stopped dead in its tracks 60 years ago. And, and uh, you know, every, you know, the buildings are... Or have collapsed, you know, it's, uh, uh, there isn't a fresh coat of paint on buildings. I mean, just in the last year or so, have we seen um, improvements in infrastructure in terms of coming back in, rebuilding, uh, showing up buildings, uh, coming up with plans to, uh, uh, to move uh, major parts of the economy. Uh, it hasn't happened until the last couple of months. Yeah, I was surprised in talking uh, with you before we uh, began this interview. Obviously, everyone knows that this uh, Cuba is down in the tropics. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you were there in the latter part of uh, September, uh, touching into early October. Uh, but even then, I think you were saying it was pretty warm down there. What I was surprised at is that you, you said where you stayed and the people, uh, everyone had air conditioning, which yeah. kind of surprised me. Well, everyone, you know, if you were a tourist, you had air conditioning. Um, you know, the rest of the residents, uh, the people who live there, probably not. Uh, unless, you know, some people, you know, you could see the air conditioning units, you know, that were in the apartments and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah, th that was there, uh, but it was not what you would call a common, you know, uh, a common luxury. You know, half the time the power goes out, too. It's not uncommon for the, you know, the power system to shut down here and there. And, and uh, you know, the power may be out for an hour, so you eat dinner by candlelight, and then, then it comes back on. Um, the same thing with... Uh, uh, in terms of um, you go into the nicest hotels and, you know, their nicest hotels are probably, uh, you know, they would call them five-star plus. Here we'd call them maybe four-star, maybe a three-star hotel. Uh, but, you know, the, what's happening is, is that all of a sudden um, there are uh, new hotels that are starting to be built. Um, and... It's, but it's not going to be enough to handle this onslaught. You know, everyone says, oh, we're going to go to the week, you know, we're going to go down to Havana for a weekend uh, and just to see what it's like. The problem is there are no hotel rooms. You know, they're all gobbled up by, you know, these, uh, um, you know, groups like ours that come in uh, and basically take over hotels and, uh, um, and, and, you know, those types of facilities. So if you're going to go, you might need to plan ahead just because, as you say, the infrastructure for tourism isn't there. And one, some people might be looking at this and say, well, why is the Illinois Channel talking about Cuba? And I would say it was uh, George Ryan, the governor of uh, Illinois, who one of the first American uh, leaders to go down there, and it was around the year 2000 or right. so, um, and maybe 1999. The, and the point is he brought with him some people, I think from ADM and, and some other uh, industries, uh, representatives from Illinois, with all that needs to be done, there will be billions of dollars spent over the next 10, 20 years to rebuild that economy and make all these upgrades that need to be made. Right. And that would mean uh, trade with uh, ADM, uh, the construction of whether it's a Caterpillar or a John Deere or others, uh, and all those improvements. You were saying when you, I think you saw one of the tour boats that came in, we think of the Carnival Cruise, those big boats coming in, but I think you were mentioning you can't do that right now again because they can't handle it. Well, the problem is is that their ports are not set up for it. I mean, the main, the main port, and, and this is a big infrastructure issue in terms of logistics uh, and th that we look at. 
um, you know, they're very much in their infancy in terms of how you're going to dis- you know, distribute uh, goods and services. Right now, most of, you know, most of their economy is, is basically a local economy. You know, you grow something in the district and you, you, know, you consume it in the district. Um, big manufacturing, you, you, you don't see big manufacturing. Um, you know, of course, you've got a national brewery. You've got, you know, you've got. Uh, uh, well, you got the cigars that are still made by hand. They're all made right? by hand. I mean, and and still, those are, and that's a very local. That is all a very local business. It's not a national, big time business. So, so I was going to say, as you were saying, we talked about the cars being like a 1950s economy. Uh, but really, so much of the economy might be more like an 1890s economy. Huh? Well, the problem is, is it is correct. I mean, you know, in the United States, we're used to seeing the big ships come in, you know, loaded with intermodal containers from China, and then they drop everything down, and then they into a harbor, you know, at a port, and then at that port they break them down, and then they send them out to different areas of, of the region. They aren't set up that way. They don't have the facilities to set that up, but that's what they're trying to do. Uh, one of the places is the Port of Mariel. Uh, Port of Mariel, it would be that type of situation where uh, the ships could come in and that they would be able to, um, at that point, you know, break down the loads that, that would come in. And, 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 you know, a key part of their economy would be how to get these goods and services out to people. You know, you've got a, uh, uh, you've got a container full of appliances. Well, right now, the problem is you don't have a way to break that down and to get that distribution system, you know, set up like we do here in the United States. Now, when you're talking about cruise ships, the problem is is that the 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 main cruise ship terminal, which would be in uh, Havana Harbor, is not set up for that at all. It can handle maybe one cruise ship right now, and up until now, the cruise ships have not gone to Havana because of the fact that the the, the maritime laws that the United States had set up had basically said that if you're an American cruise line or you're a cruise line that goes to an American port, if you go to a Cuban port, then you, you're banned from coming into the United States. So most of the cruise lines have not made Cuba uh, a stop on their, on their itinerary. Well, those laws are going to ease up, but the problem is, is that the cruise lines have no place to dock their ships. So uh, the Cuban government right now is un- undertaking a major project, and that's to turn that uh, Havana Harbor is to, number one, get the military ships out of there, number two, uh, uh, relocate the national refinery, which is right there in the, in the harbor, and, and to, to move all that out of there so that they can uh, basically deepen the port and, and, and take cruise ships. It's a really a different mindset when you when you're just saying that. I mean, of, of how to build an economy, one where you have to have nice places to stay, nice places to eat, right. uh, accommodate these people that are going to come into your country and spend money, whereas it seems like their, their current economy has been based on merely on functionality. And this is so true because of the fact is, is that they'll come back and say, you know, well, what if the big cruise ship came in and they unload a couple thousand passengers? What are they going to do? You know, they may eat at a restaurant, but the, the, no one is set up for that many people in Havana or in any other port in Cuba for that many people at one time. I mean, they don't have the, the, the trinkets, the, the, the gift shops. They have museums. You can, go, you can go to the Museum of the Revolution. You can go, you know, tour the, you know, the Capitol, and you can go, you know, you can go to a flea market and those types of things. But they don't have the large-scale um, uh, diversions that you would have on any other cruise ship port. You know, you can go to New Orleans. You can go to bars, restaurants, gift shops all day, and that's no problem. You just, it, it's, uh, Cuba's just not set up for that. What would you say uh, before? Before we go on to a different topic, what would you say to uh, Governor Rauner or other uh, leaders? Uh, we mentioned ADM. Some of them went down in uh, ni- uh, 1999 or so. Uh, should Governor Rauner plan a trip down there? Should uh, Illinois industrialists be going down there and trying to get their foot in the door and take a look for themselves and start making plans of how they might be able to grow? I mean, we talk about growing the Illinois economy uh, to fix our deficit. 
is Cuba ripe for trade missions from Illinois that they should be going down there and engaging the Cubans? Well, you know, Illinois is very active in that, and they did that several times back in, the, I think, the late 90s and the early 2000s. Uh, the big thing was to open up agricultural markets into a place like Cuba. Uh, Illinois and, you know, uh, former Governor Ryan were pretty uh, um, ahead of the game, I think is the best way to put it back then, uh, to take trade delegations to Cuba. Uh, you know, at this stage of the game, I think that uh, anyone would tell you, if you look at the rationing that goes on in Cuba right now, you know, the, the things that are rationed, obviously um, uh, there's opportunities there. Uh, the question is, is the infrastructure there uh, to handle those opportunities? Uh, sure, we can, you know, uh, you, you don't... We didn't see, you know, John Deere tractors. We didn't see Caterpillar tractors. We saw some old Russian tractors. Um, we didn't see many semis. We saw mostly smaller trucks that were, you know, kind of uh, that are kind of geared up to work around a local area. They just aren't set up yet for this large-scale distribution system. Um, you so know, even if you had something unloaded, they probably don't have many forklifts. Even little things like that. That. Uh, Lots they might be unloading things by hand still. Oh, sure. Lots of it's human labor. I mean, it's interesting to watch, you know, the local, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, where they, uh, where they kind of uh, handed out the, the, the rice rations. And, the, and, you know, someone, you know, you get a 50-pound bag of rice, you get uh, maybe they've got uh, cans of tomatoes this month or they've got, uh, you know, chicken or something like that. But, I mean, you know, the problem is, is that it's still, you know, it's still an economy that, that it's just waking up. Um, I don't think they're geared up yet to say, um, hey, everybody, come on in, and we're going to be, uh, we're going to jump ahead to the 21st century. I just don't, they aren't there yet. Did you, did you have a chance to talk with any government officials and just share some of your thoughts about, you know, interacting with uh, them and the growth of uh, Cuba? Well, the interesting part was, was that, the, you know, we met with a lot of people. Uh, we met with a lot of uh, economic development people in terms of local economies, uh, those types of things. It was interesting how our meetings, uh, you know, that, that were set up were always shuffled this way or that way. So uh, especially with the Port of Mariel, um, uh, we, had, uh, uh, we had meetings scheduled and, and they kept postponing them or changing the dates, those types of things. I don't think we would have gotten much out of those meetings. We got more meetings out of though, meeting with the local, uh, the local business people. Uh, the local business people were very point blank in terms of telling us straightforward, here's our issues, this is what we're dealing with um, in terms of getting this or getting that. How do we move this? How do we move that? These are the problems. Uh, the transportation people that were not government people, but were transportation people, you know, were very, uh, very straightforward with us in terms of the issues that they deal with. And actually, it was kind of funny because they've got a lot of the same problems we have in terms of, uh, um, you know, how do we, you know, how, how do we deal with uh, uh, bad road conditions? Uh, how do we deal with, uh, uh, you know, regulations? Uh, you know, the government regulations that says, says this or that. Uh, the best part had to be is talking to uh, uh, talking to truck drivers uh, at these companies, and they would uh, you know show us their their Cuban commercial driver's license, and they they started saying, well, we only got we can only do this, we can only do that, and you know our guys who were on the trip said, hey, it's no different in the United States, so you're dealing with a lot of the same issues that we are. So from that standpoint, I think we got a lot more out of it, even though we kind of got shuffled around a lot with the, uh, uh, with the Cuban officials, uh, we got a lot out of the people that we did speak to. And the local, the local government officials were interesting. And I want to go on to, to another issue, but the last question on Cuba. So how were you received by the people? They were the friendliest people in the world. I mean, they, they love talking to Americans. Uh, they, you know, they pick your brain, what's like this, what's like that. Uh, they ask you, you know, what do you think of our country? And here's the thing, I mean, from a, you know, from a standpoint that people are going to say, well, if you're going to go to Cuba, you're going to starve? Absolutely not. I mean, there is, you know, a couple key things to remember. Number one, they're the most educated, you know, everyone is mandated to, you know, to go through grade 12 uh, in Cuba. So everyone is educated, number one. Number two, their biggest export are... Uh, are, are there people, um, especially doctors in the medical professions, uh, the biggest export that they have. 
number three, their food. You know, their food is, is uh, we ate like kings. I mean, uh, they have no pesticides, they have no fertilizer, uh, so everything they eat is natural. And, uh, uh, and you know... It's the, all organic because it has to be. It has to be. You know, the biggest, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, the liquid gold to them is the manure from the animals. And, uh, uh, but, um, you know, their pork is heritage pork. I mean, it's, you know, it's old strains of, of, of pork that, uh, that, that they don't have any antibiotics in them. They have no, you know, no chemicals, no drugs in them or anything like that. And so between that, the seafood, the chicken... You know, uh, and, uh, and all the fresh vegetables that, you know, that we ate, uh, we ate more than we could handle. And, of course, there's rum and there's uh, beer, too. But, I mean, it... Uh, and cigars. And a lot of cigars. Uh, you know, the, the, as uh, the economy transitions in Cuba, what has happened is that they encourage small businesses to, to, to start up. The biggest thing that has started up are small restaurants. And they're called paladars. Paladars are basically restaurants that are set up in people's homes or they set them up in some other location. And they may be five, six, seven tables at, at the most. But everything is, is you know, and it's all, it's all cooked right there. Everything is fresh. Uh, and the food's amazing. Uh, and, of course, they're very proud of, of what they serve. Uh, they serve you a lot of food. Um, it's healthy. Never saw a fast food restaurant. Didn't see a McDonald's the whole time or anything like that. And, and you drink the water there? Or? No, you don't drink the water. You, uh, you you drink a lot of bottled water, but uh, even the locals don't drink the the water. The the the, uh, uh, the, the water's good for flushing and and just about you know maybe bathing, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, you know the this is the the seeds of what's happening are these these uh, uh, is that the government saying you know for the farmers you know you're still growing for the government, but you keep ten percent. What you do with your 10% is up to you. So like the tobacco farmers, you know, 10% of the tobacco, they come back and they roll their own cigars and they sell their cigars. And they're, you know, it's basically the same tobacco and the same cigar that you're going to spend maybe $20 for a cigar, you know, uh, here in the States. You're going to spend a buck, you know, a dollar, maybe a buck and a half for it, you know, in Cuba. And uh, uh, it's, uh, but it's just, it's, you know, it's such a land of contrast. Because you see these old buildings that are you know, maybe 200 to 150 years old that have weathered you know, quite a storm the last 60 years. And right next to it, you know, new cranes are going up because all of a sudden they're going to see this mass explosion of new building going up. Especially in areas like uh, Old Havana and in that area. Um, the, uh, the hotels that were built by the mob back in the 50s, you know, they were taken over by the government. Well, you know, these, uh, you know a lot of these hotels... You know they're they're showing their age, uh, but at the same time, then in, you know, in the background you see there's a new structure going up, or they're going to uh, take an older structure and they're going to remodel it and turn it into a boutique hotel. So, from that standpoint, you know it's uh, uh, the wheels are in motion and it's moving very quickly. So if someone's thinking about going to Cuba, unfortunately, you still cannot go just as a tourist. You've got to go with an organized group. You've got to go on a people-to-people mission, professional awareness, business-to-business tour, or an educational religious tour. Four areas that, that you can go. And until that loosens up, you know, you still got to go with those types of groups. But everyone's going to say in the next year, it's probably going to change just as much as it has in this past year, which they say has been phenomenal.